Hey folks, I just got back from picking up this really interesting used Enterprise gear Craigslist haul, including a Mac G4. Let's check it out. All right, here it all is. We'll start with what most people are probably interested in. It's got this Mac G4. It's got a gigabit ethernet on the back, so I think it's from 2000. Um, we're gonna go over each of these machines in detail and see what they've got, open them up, see how they're doing inside. I got this IBM Ultrium LTO2, so it takes LTO2 tapes. I think those are 200 gigabyte tapes, also from the early 2000s. Got a bunch of these killer SCSI cables. So I saw this <laughs> hiding back in a bin, uh, and yeah, IBM OEM SCSI cables. Super beefy. We'll take a look at those in closer detail as well. Got two of these just Dell, you know, whatever monitors, the ones that kind of had the USB ports on the side. I'll, I'll show the, the model number of that. I'm just gonna have those around, <laughs> you know. I don't, I don't have enough, I don't have enough. So, two more. <laughs> got one down there too. I just like having these around when I'm hooking up more than one machine. It's, it's just convenient and they're getting harder to find, oddly enough. And then we've got these PIX units. So these are firewall NATs. There's been some interesting videos that came out on these recently, actually. They're historically significant in sort of the rise of the internet and the IPv4 versus IPv6 and how we solved that problem. So we'll talk about those in a second. This guy here, this Compaq ProLiant DL380. This is actually the reason I was interested in the lot. I'm always looking for old Compaq branded gear before HP bought them. And I really, I could barely make this out in the Craigslist pictures. I was really interested to have a Pentium 3 era server. And this one definitely fits the bill. This is a ProLiant D380. HP still makes these. I think this is Gen 1. HP bought Compaq. They still make Gen 11, I think they're on now. These are probably, these newer ones are pretty popular sort of in the home lab. I have Dell machines, but yeah. So that one's an interesting one. We'll dive into that. And there we've got a IBM System P5. I believe this probably uses some proprietary CPU architecture from IBM. We'll see if that's gonna be an issue for us. It's meant to run Unix, I suspect. But yeah, I saw a bunch of these original IBM logos in the Craigslist post, and that also got me interested. So my buddy and I went on a uh, little road trip about an hour and a half from where we live, got up there, picked this stuff up. I, I originally went for just these four units you see here. The guy had this other stuff lying around. We, we figured out a deal. I'll tell you how much I paid later. And so now, Let's hop in and actually pop the cover on each of these and, and see what's going on inside. All right, let's start with the reason I got this lot in the first place. This Compaq ProLiant DL380. There's 11 generations of this. HP took over, as I mentioned. I believe this is Gen 1, based on some YouTube videos I found. Probably, I think Pentium 3 came out in 1999 or something. So. When we crack the lid on this, we'll try to find some date codes uh, for sure. It's got a disk array of four disks. Looks like it was originally some Ultra 3 SCSIs, uh, ranging from 36 to 72 gigabytes, all, whoa, 15K. I was gonna say all 10K, 15K on that drive. Unfortunately, they're all empty. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, got this kind of thin uh, disk drive, not a DVD-ROM, just, just a normal CD-ROM with a little bezel here. I find it very interesting that these drive bays look a lot like the new or later HP branding of the ProLiant. But these are compact branded, so these must have been before the acquisition or maybe right at it. Uh, I found that very interesting because I thought, I just figured these were HP drives that had been slapped in here. But they might be original and they are hefty. So let me see if I can get one out for you. It's like all metal, no, no plastic. So yeah, pretty impressive. I'll move you over to the right here. We've of course got the indicators, a three and a half floppy. That's kind of cool. This one has been affectionately labeled files, although no more drives anymore, so we won't know what that was about. And the model number is DL380R01. All right, let's flip it around for you. So this thing is just gonna be an x86 machine, obviously, a, a Pentium 3. It does have an onboard I'm guessing SCSI for a tape drive, VGA, that'll be nice. A NIC, probably 100 megabit. Parallel port, couple serial, and then of course, plug in your mouse and keyboard. It does have what appears to be a proprietary connector up here. Looks like there's four on one of these PCI cards, 
or maybe an ISA card. And I, by sheer coincidence, grabbed one of those cables. It's probably just a weird SCSI form factor. Uh, so we'll dive in there when we open the lid. And then of course, just two redundant power supplies, probably, I guess we can try pulling one out. Probably, probably nothing special there. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about that. And uh, don't forget files. Let's get this lid off. Couple thumb screws on the front and we're in. It's kind of whole L-shaped top comes off and look at what's going on in here. Look how complicated this SCSI, that four port SCSI card I was showing you. Looks like we've got some normal SCSIs on the inside here. It's got a whole <laughs> pretty serious chip on it. I'll have to look up the part numbers on that when I do like a full video on this. Very clean inside. Almost everything is the compact OEM branding, which is pretty cool. And then it's got this baffle for the CPU and there's this terrible foam inside, <laughs> which is unfortunate, but we'll, we'll have a peek. There it is. We do have the Pentiums inside. They, that's kind of just what I wanted to know. Maybe there's two of, I guess there's two of them. That's super interesting. This foam is, oh, it's too bad they used that. We'll leave it for now. Basically, I just wanted to get in here deep enough to see if it was gonna be a, a smoke show if we turned it on. I'm pretty sure we're gonna be okay. That foam's gonna be an issue. But yeah, that's pretty cool. We'll get that popped back together. And then let's take a look at this system P5. Forgot to mention about that compact. We found a date code of 2000. So this thing with the Pentium 3s in there was, was pretty hot stuff. And it used to belong to Options and Choices Incorporated. So if you're looking for your file server, I've got it. All right, and here we have an IBM System P5. So I'm guessing this is from the mid 2000s. This is probably the newest thing in the lot. It's got a ton of hard drive trays. These four over here are just blanks. Uh, these are real trays. Again, empty, unfortunately. <laughs> so, price out pretty nice, I suppose. These are also gonna be SCSI drives. We're gonna be talking a lot about SCSI in this video and probably in future videos. Um, nothing uh, else of note really there. A DVD-ROM, a slim DVD-ROM and room for another one. This whole bezel comes off, but there's not much going on in there. Not particularly interesting. Let's flip it around. Here's uh, the par for the course rails. I didn't even buy it on eBay and this thing came with busted rails. I went and picked it up. <laughs> if you buy this stuff on eBay, your rails will always show up like this, but oh well. Let's get these out of our way. I doubt I'll ever rack this thing anyway. And we have a lot of stuff going on on the back here. We've got redundant power supplies, some sort of serial connections, two NICs at least, USB, three USBs, another NIC card up here, some more maybe serial, some sort of fiber. It's got two fiber cards and it's got this really thin SCSI connection. It's got three of those. So this was probably some sort of treated as some sort of disc array, I would guess. And then uh, you got these thumb screws on the top to get the lid off as you might expect. So we'll do that and see what's inside. All right, if you haven't ever messed with any IBM gear, they, they don't mess around. <laughs> You've got this really nice schematic, it's like matte. Uh, even this mid 2000s IBM stuff, super nice. And as you'll see, we'll have a bunch of color coded stuff and more instructions probably when we get in there. Everything's gonna be modular, like seriously, no joke. So these thumb screws here, got them loosened. And uh, it's a little bent up, so I'm going to pry it off and then I'll show you what's inside. All right, we're in and look at the efficiency here. <laughs> no wasted space. And we've got some indicator lights, I think, for health of everything. Everything's modular. So on the fans even, you pull up this and I think you undo that clip. All right, I had to put you down for a second, but pops up. I believe orange indicates this can happen while the machine's running. These are the power supplies, so if one went down, you'd pull it out, put a fresh one in. If the fans go dead, pull it out, put a fresh one in. You never have to turn this thing off while you're doing that. Here is what the diagram calls the FSP card. Let's open it up. I don't, I don't know exactly what it is or how easy it is to get out. Very easy to get out. This is the FSP card or Flexible Service Processor Card 
for connecting to an IBM HMC hardware management console. So yeah, classic IBM, just complicated and high quality though. I mean, look at that. Beautiful. Not a speck of dust on it. Um, got the RAM down in there. I'm not going to pull those. I'll do a whole video, tear down of this thing eventually. And then we'll go, you know, methodically each component and see what we've got. I think this IBM stuff's going to be, I suspect, a headache to use. But, and I, hopefully just having one of these units is enough. I don't need more hardware just to power it up, see what it's all about. But uh, let's put that back in. All right, so more RAM over here. Here's the CPU, I think. This is either going to be a power PC or an IBM proprietary chip called the Power 5. These things under the System P5 branding were sold between 2005 and 2007. Uh, let's see if we can find a date code somewhere. Aha, right on the heatsink. 2006, June 23rd, 2006. All right, exploring this System P5 and its and its whole line is going to be a whole <laughs> Whole nother adventure. Uh, so we'll, we'll button this one back up and get it on a shelf and uh, put it in the videos eventually coming list. Let me know if you'd be interested. Check out these LED tubes to pass the light up into the indicators. Jeez. I almost forgot to mention, this system P5 weighs 85 pounds without hard drives in it, or 38.6 kilograms. So and it's got beefy handles on it. So yeah, you don't want to be moving it a lot. All right, on to this cute little guy. This is an IBM Ultrium LTO2. It takes LTO tapes for data and storage. And it's cool because it's an external unit. Uh, and this is one that I kind of threw on at the end of the lot once I got there. I'm just such a sucker for this IBM stuff. <laughs> um, I don't have any tapes for it. It's quite heavy, it's quite large. Came with a OEM, IBM branded SCSI Terminator. That's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, let's let's flip it on just for fun. All right. Little fan running. Doing a self test. That's pretty cool. Hopefully you guys can this might block that glare for you. Taking its sweet time. The number eight, I did not even realize there was a little screen there. Yeah, I'd say there's a 99% chance this thing just works. It takes LVD SCSI cables, and that is a nice segue into the cables I picked up. All right, so I was in a storage locker, you know, with the guy selling all this stuff where all the machines were, and I noticed the IBM and the Compaq had a bunch of SCSI ports, and this guy had boxes and boxes of these SCSI cables. He's a guy that, a super nice guy that buys old storage units that have been abandoned and then whatever's in there he tries to sell and this one was full of this old enterprise stuff. And so I was kind of in a hurry and I just kind of rummaged through them and grabbed what I thought was were SCSI cables. Turns out this is definitely not a SCSI cable. I have two of these. It's like a, I guess an IBM RIO2. I don't even know what those are for. I don't think they're SCSI. Probably never gonna be able to even use those as nice as they are. This is just a typical SCSI cable. Really nice, beefy one. Um, I will be able to use this. This is what I hoped they all were. <laughs> this is that smaller form factor SCSI that the Compaq is using on both ends. It's got Compaq labels on it and everything. So that might come in handy. And this one is sort of a mix between the two. It's got the bigger normal SCSI on one end, smaller on another. So I don't know if I can find converters and stuff. I'm kind of kicking myself, this guy had boxes and boxes of these and I'm sure he would have thrown in 10 of those for the same price. <laughs> uh, and I have to note, this rubber or whatever they use, it has a very distinct smell. I don't know if it's like that when it's new or it degrades. It, I, the closest thing I can describe is like used motor oil, like a light smell of used motor oil. And it's unlocking like a core memory <laughs> from being a child. So my dad used to own for a short while computer stores. In the, in the late 90s. There were stores called Computer Renaissance. Um, there's not a whole lot about Computer Renaissance online, so if you're interested, 
I could try to do a history of it or something because I know someone, my dad, that used to own one. And he would buy surplus lots of like all this used equipment that like banks were getting rid of or when they're upgrading. And he would have literally pallets full of boxes that were like five feet by, you know, five feet square, full of old cables like this. Obviously these are from the 2000s, but this would have been like older, you know, older connector styles, you know, probably plenty of scuzzy. And they all smelled exactly like this. I haven't smelled this exact smell since I was a kid. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, somehow I went from thinking about SCSI once a month or something to every day because I have a bunch of SCSI hard drives I picked up because I now have a bunch of these old machines that need SCSI drives. And now I've got this tape drive. I've got, I need to get more of these cables. I might reach out to that Craigslist guy and get more. But anyway, that's probably more than you wanted to know about me and my SCSI cable history and whatever the hell that is. Uh, let's move on. All right, moving on. We've got these Cisco PIX 515Es from the early 2000s. I picked these up because they are of historical significance and I wanted to play around with them. They have no practical use <laughs> in this day and age. These are interesting. Well, they're firewalls first and foremost, but these are interesting because they also perform network address translation. So in the IPv4 world, you only have like 4 billion addresses. It's not enough for all the devices in the world. And to solve that back uh, when the internet was exploding and when there was more and more devices showing up, a company that Cisco acquired came up with these PIX boxes. And with network, network address translation, obviously this exposes one public IP to the internet, but inside your network behind this, you have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of machines. And this thing basically, long story short, keeps track of the translation between that outside one and who you're actually supposed to be talking to inside the network. So you can have multiple machines sharing one public IP address. Anyway, I thought these were kind of cool. The guy uh, on Craigslist had like eight of them or something. So I threw two into the lot. This is kind of cool. This one apparently was owned by FedEx. Uh, they're from the same lot. They've got serial numbers pasted on them. Uh, these apparently were secondaries. I think these things can fail over to from a primary to a secondary. Let's flip them around for you. All right, so we got a lot going on in the back of these things. Got this kind of serial looking cable port, uh, maybe for failover. There's like a failover label here. A couple NICs, either internal or external. Again, uh, a four port NIC here, either coming in or going out to your external network, not sure. I haven't messed with these. I will say the build quality on these is top notch, super nice feeling machine, very impressive. Um, yeah, I'm excited to kind of just play around with these. So I picked these up out of just curiosity's sake. I want to mess around with them. I'll, I doubt I'll ever do a video on them. A YouTube channel called The Serial Port did an incredibly in-depth review and historical overview of these and why they're important. I'll link to that in the description. Really good video. Uh, anyway, someday I want to set up a entirely separate home lab rack with only this older early 2000s gear. <laughs> and this would be the firewall into it. Uh, as you can see, I'm, you know, slowly uh, stockpiling a bunch of this older stuff. And I'd like to have a rack that's totally period correct with all the equipment you would need to have a full, you know, enterprise grade server rack. I think that'd be fun to play around with. Obviously it wouldn't be on very long or very much because it would be a ridiculous amount of power. But that is why I pick up kind of weird network appliances like this. I'm going to kind of build it all up into a realistic rack that a enterprise might have had. So let's move on. All right. I also got these two Dell monitors in the lot. I'll throw the uh, model number up there for you if you want to have a look. These are kind of interesting because they're old enough to have analog inputs. So they can be useful if you're dealing with stuff like that or even for retro gaming. So, you, can, you know, you could hook up uh, an old gaming console to these and have it on your desk. Kind of nice. I'm probably going to use them for, you know, just having extra monitors around for projects. Kind of interesting. They have the same sort of IT tag as those Cisco units, which I think came from FedEx, perhaps. So all from the same enterprise. The only thing really of note, aside from the analog inputs, is I didn't notice this when I got it, but this one has USB inputs on the left side. And this one, by sheer coincidence, has them on the right. So yeah, got the full dual monitor setup. I also didn't notice that this one <laughs> has a ton of damage. I don't know if I did that in the car. This looks particularly bad, but oh well, it'll be all right. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about those really. All right. And then finally, a nice surprise was this Mac G4. I could kind of see it lurking in the back of the Craigslist photos. I figured someone would have scooped this up long before I showed up, which was like a week after I contacted the guy. 
But here it is. It's mine as part of the lot. These are pretty cool machines. It'll be a power PC CPU before they switched over to the Intel chips. And then let's take a look at the back here. Get you zoomed in on the model. Looks like 733 megahertz processor, 128 megs of RAM, 40 gig hard drive, gigabit ethernet. Mac was, Apple was really quick on the gigabit ethernet. That was kind of a cool feature of these. And then here we've got the Mac style. Ooh, hopefully that doesn't, uh, hopefully that's not representative of the rest of the machine. A couple USB ports, Firewire, remember that? Audio in, and that was it. So this guy used to belong to Castle Access Incorporated, whoever that is. So let's hold over. These are pretty serviceable, as I recall. Yeah, I used them a lot in high school. I think you just pulled, yeah, it's so easy. Mac did, used to do such a good job with this stuff. Yes, and I'm seeing a hard drive. Let's dive in, I'm seeing everything. This is fantastic, and this video card just doesn't have a screw. Nothing else appears to be damaged, just a little dust. Got some RAM, I'm sure that's what it said. I've got two hard drives. Yes, excellent. We've got this HP from 2001. It's got a sticker on it that says it's run. I don't like that the sticker, why would they have opened it up? That's sketchy. Anyway, OS X922, perhaps. Um, though on the front here, it claims OS X 104. So we'll see. Yeah, these are these are pretty cool machines. I think uh, we're gonna boot this one up and see what it does right now. All right, just got power and VGA hooked up to this monitor, which is finicky. We'll see if it works. I don't remember if these things like it when you turn them on when they're open like this. I'm also seeing this kind of rogue wire. Don't know what that's for. And I will certainly be pulling this battery out before I button it back up for the day. So let's flip power on. Okay, power is being delivered. Let's. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, all right. Hard drives don't sound great, but they sound like they're working. They're both spun up. Yeah, we. Ah, uh, this is a good sign. I think we have a working Mac G4 out of this Craigslist lot. That is just, what a unexpected, nice surprise. <laughs> we'll come back after it boots, if it boots. It's working absolutely perfectly. We are running OS X 10.4.11, has a gig of RAM, so that's nice. It is the 733 megahertz PowerPC G4, just like the tag said, just the RAM's been updated. Uh, some guy used to keep track of his rifle bullet inventory on here. Hope he doesn't need that anymore. Yeah, I will be able to dive into this definitely in more detail. I, I have fond memories of using these in high school uh, for various things. So yeah, definitely a video on this to come. All right, so what you've probably been wondering, how much did I pay for all this stuff? Before I tell you that, I wanna say, especially with this mid to early 2000s enterprise gear, beauty's kind of in the eye of the beholder, the beholder being me. So. <laughs> This pick stuff is arguably historically significant. Uh, there's been lots of great YouTube videos on this. I'll link them in the description. Um, I probably don't need two. In fact, I have a third one. So now I have three for some reason. Anyway, they're not very practical from, you know, using them. <laughs> You're not gonna use them. This might be interesting if you have a bunch of these LTO2 tapes. I just think it looks cool and I will be buying some tapes to try it out. This guy and this guy, they're really cool in my opinion, and we went over why I think they're they're interesting, but you're not gonna leave these plugged in all the time. Arguably, this is the only you know collectible, desirable item in the lot, this G4. Um, and then these monitors I'm just gonna mess around with to have for these extra machines. These SCSI cables, I would recommend you go on eBay and go see how much a SCSI cable costs now. It's like 50 bucks, 50 US dollars for what looks like a crappy SCSI cable, and these are like, enterprise grade OEM, IBM cables, some of them, like these are high quality cables and you're just not gonna find that on eBay for a reasonable price. So the two monitors, all these machines, these cables, I paid 250 US dollars, plus I had to do a little driving. Is it a little much? 
probably, but to me, it was a steal. I didn't have to get this stuff on eBay. If you look up, you know, each of these machines on eBay, the shipping alone is going to be 100, 150 bucks, probably definitely for these. This thing's 80 pounds. Uh, and so 250, some people would pay 250 for this G4 Mac. I'm not a huge Mac collector, but um, I think that was a fair, fair price. The guy was super nice and I'm pretty happy with the lot. So there's definitely going to be more videos on this stuff. Probably going to start with the compact eventually. I want to get something like Windows 98 running on it and let's run Doom on it. It's my, it's my new gaming rig. Anyway. If you liked what you saw, there's definitely more videos coming on this gear, on Sun gear, all sorts of other stuff I'm tinkering with down here. So if you haven't subscribed already, I'd really appreciate it if you did so you can see the new videos coming. And if you have already subscribed, I really appreciate it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.